Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to kind of the continuation of Super Fun Sunday. There was there was so much art that we had three picks um, that I had um, gathered uh, JPEGs for that we didn't get to. And what I thought I would do is today, tomorrow, and Wednesday uh, do those three artists. Um, so I'll keep it a surprise if you if you haven't watched the live stream. The live stream did great. I can't thank you all enough for tuning in, even if you just watched a little bit of it. Um, it's one of, I mean, f for uh, one day, I don't normally check my stats, but I just noticed um, last night how many views it got. It really did well. So I want to thank all of you, and we could definitely do it again. I mean, I'm always trying to figure out what it is that people like to see on my channel. Um, and if you like stuff that's interactive like that, I mean, obviously this isn't a live stream on this particular one, but um, we could definitely do it again. So anyway, um, John Rossetti selected or recommended um, Seth Fisher. I'm a big fan of Seth Fisher. I wouldn't say that I was friends with Seth Fisher, but I definitely have met him and I really liked him a lot. I thought he was such a unique person um and just so fun and really inspirational to kind of be around he had a crazy energy that um i really responded to it's like a creative like um freedom you know like no filter kind of personality which i was like um unfortunately he passed away about 10 or 12 years ago um in a very freak accident um he fell off a rooftop in japan I don't know if he was sitting on a balcony or or somehow, but he went over the edge of a building and, and was, sadly died. So Seth isn't around, but he's got a body of work that is very, very cool. He did a book called Batman Snow. We've got this Green Lantern Wily World. We've got a Fantastic Four book. You can Google him and, and see the different things that he's done. Actually, well, John's, I think he even mentioned a couple that I didn't say in here. Uh, the Flash, Time Flies, Batman Snow, I knew that, um, and the Fantastic Four, Iron Man Big in Japan. Okay, so, all right, I'm gonna shut this. All right, so let's start checking out some Seth Fisher for a few minutes. Probably, probably spend 10, 10, 12 minutes on this. So this is the cover of, um, Will World. Oh, I always called it Wily World. That's so funny. Yeah, I guess it's Will World. I don't know why I thought it was Wily World. <laughs> or Willy World. It's so weird. I guess it could have been. But yeah, Seth has got this very kind of trippy... Um, God, I don't even know. Like, I mean, you, you'll kind of see... Like, there's a little bit of maybe Jeff Darrow or Mobius in his work. Um, but it's pretty, pretty just Seth. He could draw real good, though, man. As whimsical as his stuff was, there's no doubt this guy had some serious drawing chops. So uh, I, you know, and and my guess is that there definitely will be people that will see this video that have not seen Seth's work. Sorry, this isn't the best scan of this piece, um, but uh, yeah, uh, I I would imagine that there's people, especially um, even at the time when Seth was doing stuff, you'd only get maybe like one mini series a year from him because this stuff obviously would be pretty time consuming to do. Um, but um, yeah, it's so good. The reviews on the story for this book weren't fantastic, but it was just a couple of people commenting, and obviously someone that didn't like it is going to be more inspired probably to write than someone that read it and was like, oh, that was cool, it's different, you know, so can't really hold too much stock to that, and anyway, everyone will have a different um, opinion on stuff like that, but regardless of that, Will World has very, very cool art, so that, if you're a fan of this type of stuff will definitely get you going it could it's funny this was done a long time ago too like just some of jeff darrow's um <clears throat> stuff that he's been doing the last few years it has even a character that's similar to this but this was done i think before that because this, this came out a long long time ago i'm gonna say maybe 2005 2008 uh no maybe a little later than that maybe 2011 ish Really, really cool. This is from the Fantastic Four book. Yeah, I found it refreshing to see an artist doing something a little bit different and um, with such strong drawing skills. It was fun, you know. 
really a shame that we lost him too because i i really honestly feel that like he he was quite you know not not like an older guy so he had easily 20 30 years worth of drawings left in him and uh man he would have done some kick-ass stuff for sure i mean he was just kind of catching his stride in some ways he was so good he must have been a blast in like high school i'm sure he could entertain his friends with all kinds of cool drawings This is something that you've probably fostered for, you know, since you were a kid. Hey, and it's just so crazy because, I mean, he draws, like, figures good. I mean, the hand anatomy and all that stuff, he's not, like, just, you know, it's just not weird art on its own. You can see anatomy on this figure. I mean, like, bone and, you know, um, good shapes. Dude was legit. Legit, legit art school. And in some ways, he doesn't really overwhelm you with the detail. It's not, like, so weird that it's, like, wallpaper that's unlegible, illegible, <laughs> unlegible, <laughs> illegible. <laughs> ah, it's illegible, Rich. Don't be that guy. Oh, speaking of being that guy, on Friday, I've got a live stream that I'm going to do on my channel that's a brand new, possibly, series that I'm going to be doing with um, Jerk Comics, if you follow his YouTube channel. And James Windsor Smith, we're gonna do an hour show. It's gonna, we're gonna, I'm holding it to an hour so that I can manage it. It'll be at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 Eastern. Uh, we're gonna talk about indie comics, and then we'll have like an artist spotlight in in the um, the stream too. So um, yeah, we're gonna talk about the origin of ind independent comics, how it evolved, um, you know, where it's at now, what differentiates independent comics from other comics, how is it different than crowdfunded books or image comics? Jerk knows his stuff, James knows his stuff, and uh, I want to learn about it. And so my idea was, well, why not have a show where I can be the dumb guy, because I'm not that informed on it, and um, I can learn about it, and, and also it'll encourage me to research this stuff, because I've always been fascinated by the how independent comics started and, and their evolution, you know? Because even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and things like Cerebus and Bone, I mean, those are all indie titles, although some got so successful they don't maybe seem like it. Um, and then with crowdfunding, you have almost like a whole new sort of independent thing where there a lot of them really could just as easily be a Top Cow book or Wild Storm book or whatever. Um, they But they are independent. They're independent of Marvel and DC or, uh, you know, a big a big corporation. So it should be really interesting and... and um, I'm excited to to really kind of poke around on different topics about it. Like I said, we'll always have an artist spotlight too that may not necessarily fall into the independent banner, but um, I'm letting them pick. So it'll be um, it should be interesting, keeping me out of the equation. <laughs> this is great. I love this girl with the multiple arms. Man, Seth was good. Oh, this is actually really really kick ass. Like. It's got that M.C. Escher <laughs> kind of vibe. This is from Will World, now that I know the right word. I'm glad I caught it. How embarrassing would it have been to call it Willy World or Wiley World the whole time? Even saying it, I feel ridiculous now. I should have grabbed some of the Batman Snow, but um, I couldn't find it online enough uh, to have the sequentials. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but I, I mean, I have the comics. Would be impossible for me to get them out right now. My storage is slammed with stuff as I clean my. I mentioned I remodeled my studio, so I had to get some stuff out for the time being. But next comes organizing the storage. <laughs> My office is great though now i can get to all, my, all of my bookshelves it's incredible i could i like i'll get back on seth in one second but but for the last geez i don't know five years i've only really been able to get to like maybe five percent of my bookshelves in my office because i had so much music gear in here stuff like that and it was like my bookshelf was just impossible to really access now i can get to the whole thing and get every book on it it's incredible it's a very small studio. But anyway, all right, back to Seth. 
So of the two books, I definitely would say that I prefer Will World over this. This is nice. It's a little more cartoony. Really beautiful work, though. I mean, I, I like it. Um, but uh, I probably Will World is a little tiny bit more my thing. If I was going to, like, revisit one, I would probably go to this. So this is some crazy shit. It's interesting, too, because I want to say that that this might have come out around the time that Frank Quietly was working on The Authority. And although he doesn't really draw like Frank quietly, there's a little bit of that, like you could maybe make a plead a case of Jeff Darrow and a little bit of Frank quietly in here. Although his storytelling is nothing like Frank's. Frank's, the way that Frank does panels and stuff like that is very different, but this this um, kind of Akira type line work that he does. Man, it's great. Great, great stuff. Uh, Seth, I really wish that he wouldn't have passed away. It sucked. I liked him so much. He, he, I think I met him at Wildstorm. I think he came and visited Wildstorm one time. And I was just like, this guy is the most fun, coolest person that I've met. I loved him. And then I would see him at Comic Cons. And I was always excited when he was around. Because he was sort of the life of the party. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yeah, some people just have an energy where it's like, you're like, I can't be that guy, but man, it's fun to be around him. <laughs> Look at that. This little saloon right here is great. Oh, man, it's so kick-ass. This is the Big in Japan. <gasps> Big in Japan. Banana and iron. Some of this gives me like a Simpsons vibe or like some of the like the TV cartoon things. Oh, man, that's a great angle for this toucan dinosaur looking thing. So, John, I hope that you're happy that you got your pick in. I apologize for yesterday, but I the show was creeping up to three hours and I, I really did have to split. So it worked out OK. We've got two two bonus three bonus episodes. This is one of the three. That we'll squeeze in this week, and it gives me content, and I've already I've already gathered the images. Oh, that's cool. So, man, what a great great thing! So make a great little print. Take out the word balloons. It's a fun little piece. Love this. The colors are great on this too. Really like them. So simple, but man, it reads great. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I mean, if, if you didn't know that this was Seth Fisher, I think that people might kind of think that it's Jeff Darrow. A little bit, a little bit, possibly. Darrow experts probably would disagree, but it's, it's Darrow-ish. So the colors on this are Chris Krucky. I've I've seen that name in comics before. He's good. I want to say that Chris might have colored Chris Boccolo at some point, maybe in the day. Maybe he still does occasionally. I don't know. And we have this. We should be almost at the end. And this is Chris Chuckery, too. So interesting. So they definitely were... Um, uh, a little bit of a team the you know and it's amazing too if you really think about it the colors on this are so different than big in japan i, I if if my memory serves me right i want to say that will world came out first but i could be wrong on that but i i think batman snow was maybe oh gosh it's been so long I'm trying to remember i had batman snow under my desk at wildstorm forever i remember it was i would always see it like it was probably the first book in the box I had two, I had a couple of long boxes under my desk, and so I'd always see certain comics every day just walking in, but uh, Snow was in there. It was on the bookshelf, one or the other. This is the cover for the Big Japan. And this is a four-issue thing. But, again, really, really fun stuff. If you're into some kind of wacky, wacky detailed art, um, Seth is definitely your man. And there we go. Okay, you guys have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow. I believe next in line is Stuart Immelman. So I may actually grab a couple more files for that one because um, uh, Stuart's so good and he's got so many kick-ass images. I just want to make sure that I represent him in um, a proper way because he is one of my favorite, favorite comic book pencils. All right, you guys have a great day. That is Seth Fisher 
John Rossetti, he's getting the super spotlight Monday edition. Don't forget, Friday, we go live. I, my joking title right now, tentative joking title for the live show is Three Jerks, since the, the jerk comics calls himself Jerk. I don't know if he says his real name online. I know it, but I'm, I don't want to say it in case he doesn't want it out there. But anyway, and then James Windsor Smith, who's not related to Barry Windsor Smith, but is a Windsor Smith, no less. <laughs> and James knows his shit, too. Whenever I have questions on comic minutia, he's definitely a person that I'll ask. If he doesn't know the answer, he'll find it. That's how he rolls. <laughs> so, all right, it should be fun. And it's an hour, so you can dip in and dip out, and you're, it's not a huge commitment. James goes, are you sure it's only going to be an hour? I'm like, dude, you know me. <laughs> So, but I am going to try to stick to an hour because it's Friday night and I don't want to, there's so many live shows on YouTube on Friday nights, but okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh, and check out the live stream. If you didn't just click on the live part of my channel playlist live, and you'll find all of my live streams, but yeah, left yesterday's live stream was a blast. Oh, and speaking of blast, let me just say this really quick. I apologize that the blaster kid stuff wasn't easier to see on the screen. Um, I didn't realize, I mean, I do pencil light and sometimes I pencil darker depending on how frustrated I'm getting with the drawing. If you see me drawing dark, generally speaking, that means I'm getting pissed off. <laughs> I've been trying to use, um, hard, or darker lead like HB and sometimes even, um, a little bit softer than that. F is a little, gets a little too dirty on the page for me, but, um, uh, yeah, it was not as easy to see as, as it was, but anyway, the reactions to the stuff were great and I was... I, I, I saw there was one guy that was commenting that was confused of why the stuff was unfinished. The, the Kind of the point was to show you, like, works in progress. Um, but I did show finished stuff, too. But, um, yeah, I was, I was trying to grab stuff that you hadn't seen that was, like, in progress. I generally don't skip around on pieces, but because I'm some stuff I'm designing for the first time, if I get to a point where I'm not, I'm not confident with the design or if I don't like the design I'll hold off on it because there's other stuff that I can work on it's not it's not probably the, like the optimum way to work but because it's it's a new prod like new title you know what I mean it's not like I can't just grab a comic and go well what, what's Catwoman's costume today you know what does she look like in this this part of DC's timeline so you know tr you try to work it out um, and uh, sometimes if you draw something else, you can come back to something with a fresh perspective. But anyway, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.